seems today many more teens are taking drugs and or getting pregnant. Some people might say that that's an exaggeration. Most statistics say it's not. In the past year alone, studies have shown that 3% of 8th graders smoke tobacco, about 10% of 8th graders, about 25% of 10th graders, and over 30% of 12th graders have used marijuana. Roughly 10% of teens in 12th grade have abused prescription drugs. On average, 2,500 teens a day abuse a prescription drug for the first time. Although studies have shown the use of most hard street drugs, such as cocaine, are declining, almost in response, the abuse of prescription drugs has risen dramatically. A reason for this is that most households will have prescription and over-the-counter painkillers lying around the house, up for grabs for anyone to take, regardless of whether they are actually suffering from a headache. A major problem, other than the obvious of taking unnecessary drugs, is that certain pills, when taken with others, can cause additional serious health risks. Ritalin, a common drug for children with ADD, is surprisingly similar to an illegal drug known as crystal meth. It is also very addictive and can cause lasting brain damage. Unfortunately, it has become a highly abused drug. Usually prescribed for a child, it's easy to steal it or buy from someone who has a prescription. It doesn't help that um, the popular media among teens doesn't promote drug-free living or safe sex and or abstinence. Instead, we watch TV shows about pregnant teens, are encouraged to dress provocatively at an early age, play games with high sexual influences, and listen to songs about sex and drugs or both. So all total, the life message is that sex is appropriate at a young age. <clears throat> I'm not saying we are a wild, druggy, sex-obsessed generation. It's just what we have apparently been told is appealing. Some organizations like Above the Influence have started advertising on TV and on popular websites like YouTube and Pandora Radio to show teens how messed up you can get by being a teen mother or a drug abuser. Sometimes, though, it's not our fault. Many schools teach abstinence-only programs rather than a curriculum that will explain safe sex and decision-making skills. As a result, Many teens have no clear choices for their hormone-addled, hyperkinetic middle school minds to follow and will almost certainly get pregnant or an STD. We are an extremely unique generation in that sex is such an open subject, to which we have been exposed from very early ages. This tends to desensitize us to the moral implications of a pregnant teenager and leads us to learn our, lose our in innocence on the subject before we even started wondering about it. I personally feel quite passionate about this because it really affects teens everywhere. I mean, how are we supposed to inherit our nation and run it properly if we don't even know the first thing about running our own lives? I believe the main issues here are both drug abuse and teen pregnancy are self-destructive. They cut off your future and end your dreams. They ruin another innocent life and drugs can kill you. Both problems all these problems are self-esteem issues and can be dramatically affected by environmental issues. It's self-destructive. Getting pregnant too young or doing drugs stops any hope of enjoying your teen years or growing up little by little. If you're always on drugs or are pregnant, you can't function in school properly. Both can make you moody, depressed, and even suicidal. There will be major medical issues to deal with and by neglecting to take care of your body properly while pregnant, you could both die. And getting an STD only complicates things more. Being a pregnant teenage mother cuts off your future and sacrifices your dreams. You can't finish school or go to college, so you can't really get a good job and earn enough money for you or your baby. You suddenly have all the responsibilities of family without a responsible and helpful and sustainable other half. However, if the man responsible does stay, he has a ton on his shoulders. He has to help provide for the girl and the baby, all while probably just getting into the workforce or even being underage still. There are also so many legal issues involved. There are illegal drugs, drug abuse in general, underage sex, child abuse, prostitution, selling drugs, stealing and or being a con artist, 
to feed an addiction. The teen becomes antisocial and an entirely different person, which results in poor decision-making skills. And she can die from overdosing or kill an innocent life in an abortion. And if she was addicted during pregnancy, her baby can be born addicted. In cases where the baby is unwanted, there have been some horrific instances of young mothers getting rid of their child. If the teenagers don't care, take care of their bodies in pregnancy, the babies could be born dead, disabled, or disabled. If they live in squalor, the baby could die from getting a disease as harmless as chickenpox with no healthy immune system from mom. And so, an innocent life is ruined. The baby has no say in the matter. These children are simply born into an unstable environment where the daddy is probably not around and their mom is young enough to be their sister rather than their mother. A baby addicted to drugs from its mother's body has to undergo medical treatment to wean the child off drugs. If the mother received no prenatal care, the baby could be born deformed, disabled, and underdeveloped. The infant is probably going to be left home alone for hours and shuffled between family members until finally removed by child services to foster care or into the adoption system. There are many reported cases where young children have been left with inappropriate caregivers, such as drug addicts, and the child has been hurt or killed merely for crying. Often, children have been exploited to steal for the addict or used in child pornography. Because of their unstable home, they rarely get a solid education. Then there are the se many self-esteem issues. If teenagers feel they don't fit in or are accepted, they might turn to drugs or have sex to be cool. They might use sex to feel wanted and needed. They often have a lack of self-respect or respect for their bodies. From their family, they could have learned to have an unhealthy outlook on life and negative ways of handling situations that will get them into huge trouble. For some teens, both boys and girls, discovering their sex drive, it's just to try it out. Also, being pregnant is a huge attention getter, both good and bad. The biggest problem is probably the result of their environment. What a child has been taught all of their life and what they see in their family dictates what choices they will make later on. They aren't taught the responsibilities of parenting. They aren't going to understand that a baby is a huge deal and nothing like a puppy or a doll. If the parents are even really in the picture, aren't even in the picture, and there's a turnkey kid, that teenager will get all of their information about the right things to do from TV, media, friends, older siblings, and the internet. The current attitude of movies, such as Juno, where pregnancy isn't really a big deal and just a bump in the road. As in, after the baby is with a new family, the girl can just pick up where she left off. The thing to be mentioned is that Juno's personal attitude towards her boyfriend doesn't actually appear to become less sexual after she actually has her baby. If anything, it's more so now that they're actually together. One can only hope that she learned from the first time. Another thing is what your school tells you. They might have an abstinence only with no sex ed, or abstinence as a part of sex ed. But on the whole, it's safe sex versus total abstinence. Studies have shown that showing all areas of sex education really helps. Teaching kids abstinence only isn't going to stop kids from having sex. If anything, it keeps them from learning about safe sex. There even used to be some programs on abstinence that proclaimed condoms ineffective and an attempt to stop teenage sex. Instead, it just made those kids stop using condoms. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the problem there.